Now, let's pretend, if you can, that we've known as each other as long as you can remember. When I speak to you, do I take something away from you? Like Al Pacino, do I have to own the room? Okay, and you're my little leaseholders? Or can somehow I build up trust in you so that we can actually make this room a place where we share together? When we speak, we send out signals of ourselves. We speak just as we are. We can tell who I am by my grammar, by my accent, the tone of my voice, its resonance. I give away my origins and, and my background. And when you listen attentively, you can hear the quiver of excitement, or perhaps you can hear the drone of just exchanging information. Scientists have studied birds, and their observation is this, that a bird sings to establish a territory around himself. And when a forest is destroyed, the songs diminish. And the order is something like this, when first the weakest of a particular species, their song vanishes. And then finally the sound of the whole species is silenced. Now that's a metaphor for us. Okay? That's about us. Have you seen that commercial on TV? It's, it's a casino. And it says something to the effect of, the man who controls the volume is king. Live out loud. Now in life, if you don't speak out, that man will probably take your place. And in Toastmasters, if you don't speak out, my place too will be taken. <coughs> because we're really a chorus, and both of our calls can be dropped. I'm especially afraid, this is a sidebar for you younger people, because our socioeconomic <coughs> system really compels you to produce and to consume. Okay? It's all about how many transactions you make, your excellence in being productive, your <coughs> capacity to consume. The measure and pressure you have, sometimes I worry, is going to make you forget to tell what's on your mind and what's in your heart. <clears throat> now you probably know that computer engineers are already working on algorithms that can take a massive information and make them into complete grammatically correct sentences. I don't know how they do it. I think it's an incredible miracle that they can even do this. And I, I took a test where I looked at different ones, and believe it or not, even with me being an English major, I couldn't tell the difference between the algorithms, um, sentences, and the ones that were done by the reporters. Now think of that, that really terrifies me, that someday we won't be able to tell the difference between a human response and what's produced by a machine. And that makes me feel how important it is for us to really work on the craft of writing, speaking, and listening. By the way, there's someone out there who really needs to hear from you. Maybe it's an old friend. Really needs you to call them up, not send them an email, or forget about them until next week, but to call them up and remind them that their life is valid. And by telling them that their life is valid, you're validating your own. That person really needs to hear from you. When you were a child, did you take seriously what they told you about being seen and not heard? No, you really didn't, huh? You wouldn't have gotten this far if you took that seriously. Or speak only if you're spoken to. How about that one? Okay, those rules don't apply in Toastmasters. Then there's the other one that be careful what you say because you can never take it back once it's said. And, I mean, that used to, well, it's true on Twitter, but I don't think it's true anymore in Toastmasters. I think we have kind of a sacred space. This isn't going to Twitter, is it? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> because I think we're allowed as many slips of the tongue as we can make during our five to seven minute speeches. <clears throat> Remember that language takes practice, mistakes, corrections, uncertainties, apologies, and rehearsals on its way to becoming human. I really like that sentence. 
Language takes practice, mistakes, corrections, uncertainties, apologies, and rehearsals on its way to becoming human. So take it back. Take your, humanities, your humanity back. And the words, whether they're the right words, they're haphazard or the wrong words, speak your piece. This is all about practicing to be human. Our club has a remarkable opportunity. The diversity in here is incredible. When I look out at it, some of you people, I don't share your race, I don't share your gender, I don't share your ethnic background, your religion, I don't share your age group, and I certainly don't share your future values. But with this group, language can bridge the difference. And you know what? We're small enough so that we don't have to be impersonal. I would have said we could be personal, but I was frightened to say that. Um, nothing can invent the way that you've been made or the way that you translate your experience. That's uniquely yours. Nobody can appropriate that from you. Okay? You have to give that away by choice. Your experience is invisible to me, to us. Okay? The people of your life, I don't know who they are unless you bring them here with your words and I have a chance to meet them. The places that you've lived in, if you describe them, if you bring them in here and describe them in words, I have an opportunity of being there through you. <clears throat> Each of you have within you something that's miraculous, ceaseless, and quite original that can be tapped. But sometimes it lives in silence, it lives in suspicion, it lives in uncertainty. And so you have to speak that out. Practice your humanity. Call the person who needs to hear from you. Write that five to seven minute speech that we're dying to hear. Don't hold your, speak, don't hold your peace, speak your peace. And remember, when you speak as you are, you honor everybody in the room with your trust, and you call yourself into being. <clears throat>